What is going on guys, Ed Bandicoot 101 here and welcome to another video where I show you how to mod a reference and video graphics card to change the LED on the side from green to a colour of your choice. Now initially I want to apologise for the quality of the lighting in here, all I'm using is my phone's LED because all the lights in my room apart from my main central one have gone and it's a bit dark to film. However, I'm going to attempt this anyway. So what you will need is sandpaper, fine grit, I'm using 600 grit, you will need a multi-tool set like you see here, a reference graphics card like a GTX 770, 980, 970, as long as it's a reference card, preferably not a founders edition because I'm not sure how they come apart of the 1080 series, but a reference Nvidia card of the 900 or less series that looks a bit like this. So you're going to need the reference card, the screwdriver toolkit with hex, hex heads as well as standard screwdriver heads. Uh, as well as sandpaper and paint of your choice, uh, maybe some finisher of your choice depending on what you want to do, or if you want to leave the LED white, uh, this will be without any paint. But, I'm going to be changing the LED to purple as a heads up on this card, so that it is no longer green as I'm going to be doing a special build soon, uh, which requires a purple theme. So without further ado, I'll show you how to take it apart. Initially you want a small hex head like this, and you will take out the four screws next to the actual impeller, or fan as most of you out there would call it, uh, so there's four hex head screws that are going to come out of the impeller. I put all your screws to the side because you're going to need them to put this back together. I've never done this before. This is a tutorial off the top of my head. I'm hoping you guys will uh, be able to see what I'm doing. But initially the four screws around the impeller need to be taken out in order to take the shroud off. So take these four out first. I've actually pre-loosened a few of them so that make this bit a bit easier. Uh, but you're not actually going to be taking the cooling surface or the actual cooler itself off the card so um, because you only want access to the LED and to be honest putting the whole cooler back on with all the foam pads and everything is a real pain so definitely do it this way and if you can avoid it which you can by doing it this way uh, you don't need to take the actual um, I need a bigger hex head for this bit but you don't need to actually take the uh, cooler off of it in, in, as such you don't need to actually take the cooling plate away from the GPU die so next you want to take off all the bigger parts of the shroud. Uh, as you can see these pieces here are holding the glass or the acrylic pane against the heat sink there. Uh, I keep a separation between your screws as well to make sure that you know where they're going to go back into the card. Else you're going to have a lot of fun putting it back together. Although I think they're only about three sizes so it would be quite difficult to get confused putting it back together. However, for those of you out there that are easily confused, separate the screws when you take them out so you know where they go and where they're going to go back when you put it back together. So I'm assuming if you're doing this you want to put it back together and have a modded card rather than a broken card or one that's in pieces. So yeah, also as a disclaimer, you're doing this at your own risk if you're following along. Uh, obviously this voids the warranty of the card completely and I highly recommend not doing it. I'd rather you did your builds in a green colour to make life a lot easier, that's what I do. Uh, all my builds, if I like the reference cards, have a green build, green build colour. However, not everyone's able to do this. Uh, some people want a different colour. Oh, there might be four different sizes of screw, sorry. Uh, so yeah, there might. Uh, not everyone might want that. Some people might want to keep the reference cooler, but no, don't want that purple, LED, that green LED. I think with the new series, Nvidia really should have thought about. Um, so yeah, I'm taking the screws out of the side now. As you can see, there's two screws holes either side there. Also, use a slightly larger hex head. So yeah, I think Nvidia should have been shipping the fans edition 1080 and 1070 with an RGB cooler because I think that's kind of what they should have done with it really rather than sticking to their green theme. I appreciate it's their company colour but it really does restrict people to uh, customising their rigs a bit more. And in all honesty I think people that are forking out the money for brand new fans edition cards are the sort of people that like to tinker and are the sort of people that want to customise a bit. So having this as the only option to really... Uh, Rectify that isn't really acceptable in my opinion, and I think Nvidia should do something about it really. But in the meantime, we are all stuck with our reference coolers that look a little like this. So with the green LEDs on there. So yeah, two screws either side at each side, and there's also you need a smaller hex head again to get the final ones out, which are at the top end of the card by the fan up here. Uh, they just go in the head there. I'm sorry I couldn't get it all in the frame, but as you can tell, my space and lighting is rather restricted today, as previously mentioned. So yeah, two more at the top here to get this off, and then there. As a warning, uh, the plastic acrylic sheet is separate to the uh, is separate to the actual cooler itself, and will come off separately. So be careful with that bit because you don't really want to be going around yanking the uh, 
plastic around and scratching it and ruining the look of your lovely graphics card. Now the only reason I'm doing it with this card is because it's quite a cheap graphics card. It's probably the cheapest reference cooled card you're going to buy that looks like this. Uh, I mean I got it for... Now we should start seeing parts coming off. So if we take the side bits off here. They're actually quite dusty and quite sticky, which is kind of disgusting. That's it, we'll support second hand. But not the end of the world, we can always clean it off before we put it back together. So there are the two side bits off, and they are different, so you can't put them on the wrong way around, so don't worry about sorting which one goes which way, because they do look a bit different. Now we should have access to take this bit off, I believe, or are there more screws in the top? To me it looks like we have got two more screws holding the plate on at the top of the card. Although I can't really say for certain right now what's holding what together. So, hang on, oh god, dropping bits of the graphics card everywhere. Uh, I think we're probably going to need a standard Phillips head screwdriver, quite a small one uh, for this next bit. I'm going to choose a medium sized one out of this kit I have here to take these screws at the back of the card. I think these might be the last pieces in order to get this off. So let's find out. So there are two screws right by the input outputs, well the only, actually only the outputs, the outputs at the back of the card. Uh, and I think these are separate, actually there might be more than five types of screw. One, two, three, four, five, there are five types of screw. Oh no, I dropped a screw on my black carpet. What am I going to do? I've lost my lighting. This is going great. I found the screw, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry guys. Now this looks like it should come off now, I believe. Nope, there's one more hex head there, and one more hex head there. And I think that should be everything holding it on. Right, two more hex heads. These are the smaller type again at the side of the card, so we might even have six different screw types. In which case, be very careful taking these screws out, and please label them, because I haven't. And I have a feeling I might come to regret that in the near future. Is that not coming out? Okay, the plastic's loose. Let's try doing it from that way up. That's too small. And I reckon this hex head's going to be too big, so this could be a problem. Hmm, so we need one in between those two sizes. Right. You're going to need multiple different sizes of hex head by the looks of this. Those two aren't right. That one might be. That looks in between the two to me. They're all labelled, but I can't be bothered to read out which ones I'm using. That might be a bit big. Let's just try it in there. Too big. Alright, put that back. Right. Hmm. We could have run into a little bit of a snag here. That one's a bit smaller again, let's try that. Nope. Right, so how are we gonna get these out? That's too small, that's too that's too small as well, isn't it? Even if I do it at an angle, I'm just grinding it all out. That is useless, so I need one a tiny bit bigger than that. Right guys, believe it or not, we actually had to drill it off because it was completely threaded. However, this side of the graphics card isn't going to be visible when it's installed. And I'm pretty convinced that we cleaned the metal off well enough with it not to cause any issues. However, don't drill your fucking graphics card unless you're an idiot like I am. Anyway, we need a hex bit screwdriver. So, no we don't, we need a Phillips head screwdriver. Oh god, this has not gone too well. So... Phillips head, the smallest Phillips head I have will be preferable actually, which is actually which one? Um, I thought I already had the smallest one out, but maybe I didn't. Maybe it is this one, in which case it might be too big. Oh no, it's perfect. So yeah, these middle ones here, right next to the heatsink, you can't miss them, there is four of them. And we actually drilled right through that without even damaging the heatsink. That was very impressive albeit very stupid. Now we're up to like seven types of screw now, so holy shit, get yourself a true scray. A true scray? A screw tray. <laughs> and uh, 
Actually, we don't need to take that side. Oh, do we need to take that side off? Yeah, we might do actually. Yeah, these bits are actually holding the fan on. So, when doing these bits, be extra careful because both the fan and the LED are obviously both plugged into the circuit board itself. So, when taking these out, A, you don't want to drill through them, which I didn't, but B, you also don't want to. Uh, I couldn't actually drill the screw, I had to drill through the bit of metal. So you see this side, that bit of metal is going to hold the shroud on. You can't see it at all really. But that bit of metal there is going to hold the shroud on. And then this side I have to drill it off. But luckily it is the side that no one's going to see once it's installed. And the other ones are more than capable of holding it in position while it is in the case. So I'm still relatively happy that this is going to be an improvement over the standard green LED in a purple themed case. However, that has yet to be seen, as we haven't found out whether the LED is actually going to turn purple or not yet. And uh, some of these screws are just absolutely awful and don't want to come out no matter what you do. Like this bastard was incredibly tough to get out. And I still can't get him out. Oh wow, yeah basically some of the, the screws in this are just horrible and actually in hindsight I wouldn't recommend taking it apart at all. And yeah. eventually we get to the part with the sandpaper and we've got this bad boy out. Took two screw snaps as well as getting another what? 14, 15, 16, 17 of the screws, no I've got 16 out of 18 of the screws out and snapped two in order to take it apart because it was so old that we were all like melted onto it, not working very well. And it was more effort than it's worth. So if you're going to do this, do it while the card is new and the quarter is easy to take apart and be gentle with the screws so they don't thread because they're really delicate. But we're here. So let's change the colour of this by sanding it on fine grit sandpaper until there is no green left. It's pretty easy. So since you last saw me on the video, I've sanded it off. I did a layer of the purple nail polish, uh, which some bits were a bit thicker than others. And I also recoated over the edges with black to make sure all the letters look correct. And... Uh, from a perspective without the LED turned on, it looks absolutely smooth, lovely, looks absolutely great. However, as you can see behind me, I have it pulsating in the rig behind me. I don't know how well you can see that. However, uh, let me try and get a focus on it a bit. Hang on. However, the actual finished product is a little bit patchy due to the fact that the thickness of the nail polish is different in different places. So if you do do this, make sure that the thickness of whatever you're, material whatever you're painting over with is uniform across all of the letters. The only letter I think looks really good is the R on the G-Force. I will do a close-up in a sec. But the only letter that does look really good is the R on the G-Force. Although the card is still functioning A-OK -okay and is absolutely fine, as you can tell, which I'm quite surprised by. I mean, I was just playing with the rift with it, so it's A-OK. -okay. Uh, yeah, and on the edges of the X, I also didn't go right to the edges, so there's a slight white patch showing at the edges of the lettering there, which also looks pretty cheap. But where I've covered over some bits with black and then repainted over with the purple again, uh, that's actually made it far too opaque and stops the LED shining through. However, when it's turned off, it looks great. So what I think we're going to do when we put this in the new system, uh, the hinky pump, we're going to probably have either an LED strip in the case that uh, illuminates the case itself without having direct light behind the GeForce logo, or we're going to have to have the GeForce logo at a very low brightness so that the patchiness doesn't show up so much, yet it still stands out. Uh, but it does not look as clean as it does coming out of the factory, obviously, and I was kind of hoping for a bit of a better finish on it, but I'm too cack handed and lazy to ever do anything immaculately. So, it's a bit of a shame, I ruined the aesthetics in my opinion of the card, but it does match Beth's build, and I think she's going to be very happy with her Hinky Punk build, and we're going to leave it purple. So, that's pretty much the video. Would I recommend doing this? Hell no, just make a green theme system. Much easier. Uh, that's what I personally do and what I would recommend doing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed how to do it, as well as how to do it all. Well, I painted it on with, a, with the, the actual nail polish brush, as well as a bit of black Warhammer paint to rough off the edges. But that's pretty much how you do it. You put the card back together in the reverse order of taking it apart, and plug it in, and it should work A-OK. -okay. Make sure you plug back in the fan connector and the LED connector, obviously. Uh, you shouldn't have had to unplug the fan connector, but you get where I'm coming from. Make sure everything's plugged in again and put back together fine, and it should be A-OK -okay as it is there. Uh, so yeah, I've also increased my temperatures by a degree, not significantly, but by a degree or two by doing this. Probably nudged the heatsink around a bit, and it isn't quite as well in contact, but it's not really an issue, as I have my fan profile set anyway. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you're an absolute muppet like I am. But, 
there you have it, purple GeForce logo. So enjoy the close-ups at the end. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, at Bandicoot101, like my Facebook page, at Bandicoot101, and follow me on Instagram, at Bandicoot101. Links to all that good social media stuff will be down in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please remember to share it, because it helps me out a massive amount. I know you can't understand a word I'm saying, because I'm speaking so fast, but thank you very much.